The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my brother, my brother. Main advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. What up, Trav Nation? I'm your middlest brother, Wolf Wolf Big Dog, Travis McElroy. Hi, Trav Nation. Good morning. It's Griffin McElroy. Thank you tra- for tra- having me, Trav Nation. You're welcome. What did you bring um, us as offering? Three well, apples. Wa- oh, delicious. Uh, uh, Trav Nation, I've brought news of Madame Webb from the wild. Yeah. Oh, wait, come in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We don't, need to, we don't need to rush the news. You are dusty and tired, Traveler. Come, rest. <laughs> if, I may, if I may sup and bathe. Soak in of our course. basin. My, of course. my women have had a long journey of defending me from the outlanders, mm-hmm. and they require sustenance and rest. Yes. That, okay, that's, I'm trying to decide if this is problematic or not. Go on, traveler. <laughs> what? Your women? Perhaps in your land you prefer to treat your women like shrinking violets. But where I hail from, they are fierce warriors. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm cool. into it. Wait, hold and on. I'm into this. And I get to just okay, watch and let listen. Me let me roll for intimidation. Yeah. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That kicks ass. No, okay. I, I, uh, just, you're yeah. in that headspace because of Madam Web, I feel like. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like Madam Web has. I want to tell you guys everything about Madam Web because it's yes, finally please. out. And I feel like if you don't want to know about Madam Web, I think you should, you've probably decided that you're not going to see Madam Web, but that's probably a good decision. Yeah. But I might try, I might try to make a pitch. If you don't even want to hear about it. Madam Web, know that we sat here stone cold five minutes trying to think of another thing to talk about in the intro. And there's just nothing. And it's are. just Madam Web out there t- t- today. So let's address question one that Travis asked me off mic, or, or maybe it was Griffin. Why did you watch Madam Web? Good question. Okay? Yeah. Good Essential question. question. Let's start there. Um, the hardest thing I heard, I saw someone do a TikTok recently that said the hardest thing about being married, and it's like, oh well, so you have to pick something to eat, and that's true. Yeah, but the every second night hardest, you have to look at your partner and say, "What are we going to do for dinner?" As though you've never ever had, had, had to before. figure it out before. Yeah. So in in um ma- the second hardest thing is picking something to watch. Now, when Sydney and I are, we have similar tastes, and we're in we're in locked in with the show that we both like. We're watching it. Madam Web came about because we had been, we just found something that we felt the same about. <laughs> it yeah. was a, we both didn't want to watch it the exact same amount. And oh, for some yeah. reason, it made sense. To watch right. it two negatives. Of that. It's the make two positive. negatives. Yeah, make exactly. it positive. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. So, some things about Madam Web that I think is important to know is okay. that nothing happens in it. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, cool. Nothing, that's one of the chief things you should know about Madam Web is that nothing happens in Madam and Web. And sometimes you want that in a movie, yeah. just yeah. a nice, relaxing. I get to right. the end nothing. of a, one of these superhero movies, guys, and I'm fucking tired. They have worn me out watching them run around and throw their shields and stuff at people. That makes me exhausted. Right. So she. What, the things that happen in Madam Web that are cool yeah. are there's a the ba- the main okay I'll tell you the plot of Madam Web so oh, right. Madam Web's mom is yeah. a scientist in a jungle okay. and she's looking for super mega spiders that can cure disease because her daughter uh-huh. has a a degenerative d- disease. Her unborn daughter has yeah. a degenerative disease huh. that she's trying to find a cure for. Okay, with the incredible power. You could spider. just say we've got kind of a Morbius situation going on. So yeah. the super spider is located, but then a mean man steals it from her so he can have the power of got it. that for himself. But he shoots her, but she's rescued by. I don't know how to say it other than there's sort of like 
Spider-Men Who Live in the Jungle. Sure, okay. Oh, called Los yeah. Aranias, okay? So he's yeah, yeah, saved yeah. by them, and then they use their incredible spider magic to try to save her long enough now, to Now, hold on, because I've never known... The magic of spiders. The yeah. magical spiders. I've never known Spider-Man to be a wielder of the, of the arcane arts. Um, Interesting. You okay. think that would have come up? Because there's been a lot of times where Spider-Man has hung out with Doctor Strange, and you think it would come up that Doctor Strange would be like, and I know you to also be a practitioner. Yeah. Of the magical spider I'm not. Arts. I'm not yeah. saying no. that there is much okay. of a biological explanation for man gets bit by special spider and then can shoot a very tensile jizz from his wrist that lets him swing mm-hmm. around New York City and I, stop there's thieves. an internal logic to it, I guess. Right, but I, I guess it is magic if you think about okay. it, is what I'm saying. Flash forward. Okay. <laughs> Fast forward 20 years. Welcome to New York. Hey, in the city, it's yeah. the nineties. In Welcome New to York, it's, it's Spider like Man are swinging from buildings. They're shooting their webbings. We try to calculate the time. I think it's around like early two thousands. We uh, we see Madam Web. She's a firefighter, ambulance driver. With her partner is you'll never guess. It's Ben Parker. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, cool. Famous uncle. Famous yeah. uncle. uncle. Sorry, Sorry. not the clown. I've never known him without a nephew. I, Adam Scott as Uncle Ben, who, when we first see him, is in the back of an ambulance trying to save a life by delivering one-handed chest compression. Holy which is, shit! Is he a superhero? Sydney said exactly. That's a hell of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, really, you don't see that a lot. He was. He was he using said, his other hand. Happened. He was using his other hand to eat a New York hot dog. Hey! 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 I'm compressing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so staying alive, staying alive. Yeah, you're supposed to do CPR to that. Oh, you are. I just am always kind of singing "Staying Alive" because I'm a New York uh, guy. Now, what, what do you think Adam Scott's experience was in the short thirty second window of you're going to play Uncle Ben in a Spider Man movie? Be be be. But <laughs> but <laughs> here's the catch. So we know that there has to be a Spider Man movie from Sony every couple of years or they lose Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah. So that is why these movies exist. And City thinks that Spider-Man has to be in it, <laughs> which is, we'll get to that. Ben Parker, we find out, has a sister. His Ben Parker's brother, Richard, is gone. His sister, Mary, uh, the sister-in-law, Mary, is pregnant with Peter Parker. Now, the first conversation we see Madam Webb have with Ben Parker, he says, well, I've met somebody new. I'm really into her. And she's like, what's her name? And in the audience, I'm like, it's May. And then it stares at his face for like five seconds while he makes like sheepish looks cool. and doesn't say May. Yeah. Ben Parker is in the movie, so the movie can remind you that it thinks you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will not, He's not going to say that. Later on, there's a very similar scene where they're talking to Mary Parker, and they play a game about what they're going to name the baby. Oh, uh, nice. You know, they never, you know I'm what thinking word is never dick. said in that scene? <laughs> you know what word is never said in that scene? You guessed it. Peter. <laughs> Nothing happens in the movie. Madam Web doesn't have any superpowers okay. that she can use. Okay. So At they one- introduce magical Spider-Man in the jungle who use spider magic to save her. Yeah. Yes. But that. Yes. That has she no impact. Okay. Awesome. No. She at one point attempts to climb up a wall and just kind of slides down it in one of the movie's few entertaining Now, scenes. wait, I will say most, mo- most movies do have that scene in it where they do. Most movies have beginning, middle, and end, a climax, a denouement, and a Spider-Man test to see if the character. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it in um, marriage, the, the marriage story with Adam Driver yeah. when they were like, yeah. "I fu- I hate your fucking guts. I hope you fucking die." Hold up, one second. <laughs> I just gotta check one thing. We all we all remember the classic scene where he's like, "Good soup, thwip thwip thwip." Why are you making that noise, Adam Driver? I'm just trying to. And that's what's so one decade. I have a timer that goes off just to see if it kind of came in my 40s. Oh, that's what kicks ass about Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man flick is he was like, oh, hold on. Hold on, guys. Spider-Man test. Psst. Holy shit, it worked. And the audience just loses yeah. their mind. Like, guys, I, you'll never believe this. I went to a movie today and the Spider-Man <laughs> test worked and he was Spider-Man. <laughs> this is, I'm so glad that we're bringing this up because I've been meaning to talk about this for a while. I think the Spider-Man test in Inception 
is connected to the Spider-Man test in Shutter <laughs> Island. <laughs> yes. I, th- I think it bookends like the yes. two and just shows a connection between Inception and Shutter Island. Yeah. We can discuss offline. And we also know, so. I do want to be clear, the Spider-Man test can also refer to when two Spider-Men have a conversation not about Race Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah, so few films pass it, but no. when they do, it's yeah. so they, meaningful. Actually, just one there's I can one. think of. No, no, can no, there's, think of. there's three. What, two of them are animated. <laughs> two of them are animated, yeah. and then one, yeah, they're all, all very recent. This is new technology. Um, so the we see the 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 bad guy Ezekiel. He has this nightmare where three spider ladies kill him. Okay, <laughs> and this yeah. So it's been uh, there, man. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, so, J- so only the, three. <laughs> wow. So so these three spider ladies. They he has this dream. He's gonna kill these three spider. These three spider ladies are gonna kill him, and he's like, I gotta find these spider ladies and kill them first. Yeah, because they're gonna kill me, and I'm freaked uh, out about it. And then nothing happens. Cool. Uh-huh. For a really long time. What is what are you what are you seeing on the screen and what sounds are you hearing and sights are you yeah, seeing? Yeah, was, was the projector what, broken? Maybe <laughs> here's what this here's what it is. Madam Web will will watch the bad scenes from the movie. She will experience the bad scene, and you, the audience, will experience the bad scene in the movie. Cool. And then the movie will restart to like thirty seconds before that, and you will watch the bad scene again. And then Dakota Johnson will say, I'll be damned. Yeah. <laughs> it happened again. Shit. How much movie do we have left? Fuck. An hour and no powers, huh? Shit. All right. <laughs> and then she finds those three spider ladies, and you'll never guess it, but none of them got powers either. Huh. Because that's in the future when it's interesting. Whoa. <laughs> when the movie is interesting, Dakota Johnson has spider powers. No, has psychic powers where she can see the future. And then there's she has three spider not spider got to be related to the spider magic in the jungle. It's related yeah. to the magic spiders. We don't know how the three of them get s- spider powers because we never see it happen. They're just kind of in the movie. Yeah. Okay. Now, now this is the most important thing is that Adam Scott was doing this chest compressions on somebody. Okay. okay yeah, and yeah, brought yeah. and okay. And then she did chest compressions on somebody on the ground uh, outside of a disaster and brought them back to life. And then she falls in a river and Adam Scott pulls her out, and she dies, but Adam Scott brings her back to life with chest compressions. Okay. People do see chest compressions two other times in this movie. Huh. There are, like, six scenes. There's a scene, guys, where Madam Webb, in trying to protect her three spider surrogate daughters, teaches them CPR. It's the closest we get to a scene of people getting superpowers. Yeah. Because they will use. <laughs> That's how it starts, man. You learn CPR, you get a little high on the hog, and then yeah. you fuck it, and then you go out there and you start trying to fly. You do mini Spider-Man tests. <laughs> so she goes to a cave in the jungles, and there's a guy there, and he's like, Wait, why does she go man. there? Yeah. And so she goes to a ca- spider <laughs> cave in the jungles, and there's a guy there, he's like, Fuck, man, you are so powerful. And she's like, really? Because I feel like I'm just kind of going nuts and seeing things in the future, and then they restart. No, man, you know CPR, and that's where it all starts. (laughs) He's like, when you figure it out, fuck, you're going to be cool. And she's like, now? He's like, not now. (laughs) Not now, but later. Dang, you're going to rule. She's like, can you teach me how to (laughs) use my powers? Like, you assume he's the Ben Kenobi or whatever. And she's like, he's like, ah, no, no, no. I I can't. I can't do that. (laughs) Oh, oh, I wish I could. He's like, when you're ready, you'll be the most powerful. And he like, he's like, I'm sorry about this. And he punches her so hard, her spirit flies out of her body and into a lake. And the result of that is nothing. Nothing changes as a result of that. She just kind of goes back into it. At the end of the movie, now we're getting into spoilers for the end of the movie. So I want to tell you what happens at the end. Can I tag out? No, you're still in. Fuck. At the end of the movie, the bad guy, Ezekiel, is threatening all of her surrogate spider daughters at the same time. Uh huh. So does he have decides, three guns? How does that work? She's like, they're well, like he all took the danger. spider magic, I think. So he probably has extra hands, right? Okay, they're all cool. in danger. Madam Web still has done nothing for the whole movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In my head, when I saw those ten minutes left, I literally couldn't believe it. It's impossible. We're still in Act One of this film, but 
There are three of them in danger. What happens is that Madame Web realizes that she loves her mom so much Wait. that she is able to split her essence into three. Now, those three essences don't actually do anything to help the spider ladies. Yeah. Uh-huh. They just kind of like super support them. This looks cool. And mm. then the bad guy, Ezekiel, is mad about that. Yeah. So he punches her so hard in the stomach that she goes back together into one. Okay, and so so far up. we've seen her is one of her powers that when she's punched, it either knocks her spirit out of her or pulls her spirit back in. Yes, she, yes I think she's it's eth- a power. She's ethereally punchable is not a yeah. great power. And yes, it's not a great power. And then what happens at the end of it is that she she notices there's a giant Pepsi sign above the evil Spider-Man, yeah. Ezekiel. And then she's scooting away from him. And then she scoots to the exact place where the sign is going to fall. And it... That that's how she beats him is that she scoots to a place where a Pepsi sign falls on him. And if I'm the Pepsi Co, yeah, I do not think I want my brand used like that to crush to crush. Now hold on, Juice, all. hold on, because I had the same thought. But if you're Pepsi Co, and you find out that the Pepsi sign smushes the it's bad the hero guy, of the movie, does more than tell. Madame Web does. I think you're back on board. Yeah, so I is think the guy, I'm into it at that point. Is the guy that she meets in the cave Saul from Better Call Saul? And he's like, you're going to be really good at staging insurance claim accidents? Because that's what no. it sounds like she is set up. Because they're going to sue. Is he your family? Yeah. Is going to be able to sue PepsiCo for maybe brilliance. Everything. Oh, you guys are worried because this, she falls off of the thing oh, when I the wasn't. sign crashes down and kills Spider Man, and she falls off. Wait, and she kills Spider Man? What? Evil, Evil Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Okay. She falls into the water, and the, her spider daughters bring her out of the water, and but but she stays dead forever because none of them can do anything about it. Oh, man. So it's sad how it ends. No, Wait just a kidding. They use CPR Fuck yeah. and bring her ass back to life. And then you, in the movie's final shot, you see all three of them with spider powers and Dakota Johnson in giant ass red glasses and a red cape. Did I mention it made her blind? Falling in the water. She's blind now, but that's fine. She's Not in a the couple of times she's been punched and it affected her spirit. No, she's okay. in a wheelchair. She's got huge glasses and she looks cool and she's floating around. And, and then, then the, the movie starts. <laughs> and then the movie ends. <laughs> no! What happens is what happens is the movie ends. And they're like, okay, time for the movie. Justin, are you ready? And they're like, I'm actually not ready because I don't want to watch any more of it, but I guess fine. No, end of film. Listen, that's the end of Madam Think of Web. it this way. Madam Web 2, mm. mathematically, is going to have two movies worth of kick-ass stuff that happens in it if none of it happened in Madam Web 1. That's a good point. They Delayed it gratification. All. This is who it's a, it is superhero origin story edging is essentially what they oh. have conducted here. Two other brief notes. The man in the cave tells her that when she accepts great responsibility, she will have great power. That's cool. Oh, so it's kind of a reverse of traditional, maybe yeah. put, like, because normally Uncle Ben would put a lot of extra pressure on his teenaged nephew yeah, of saying, yeah, hey, man, fight, with great power, him. you have to save everybody in the world. But instead he's saying, when you're ready to save everyone in the world, <laughs> Can then, you, can you, good um, news, you can. imagine the backpack of cocaine that must have been consumed after that line was written <laughs> in a room? Like, guys, we I, guys, I fucking got it. Toss hey, down the jam sport, took, Stan. You took three, Stan. You took three weeks of vacation after <laughs> one day of writing. Yeah, you don't understand. I That's wrote this good, line. Right? Well, I just read it, and I'm going to take a week's vacation. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm man. Because I hired you, so I deserve it too. Listen, in one of these final moments, uh, May Park, uh, sorry, Mary Parker, Peter's mom, is rushed to the hospital. Do you want to take your shirt off and then continue telling us about? Because she's about to give birth to the Spider Man. Yeah, the and Spider-Man. they never say his name or anything. They ask Madame Webb, "So how's been like being a uh, an uncle?" She, he loves it. It's all the fun of being an uncle with none of the responsibility. And Surely then she, she says, says dad. And then she says, huh, if only he knew. Like a lot, like it's a joke because she can see the future, right? That, may, the joke that is Mary's going to die. brother is going to die and Mary's going to die. And then later Uncle Ben dies. But hey, Spider-Man. Uh-huh. 
when the baby is born, you do see the baby very briefly. And then Cindy leans over me and she says, okay, that explains it. And I said, what? And she said, well, they have to put Spider-Man in the movie for it to count for their contract, right? I'm like, I'm not sure it's exactly how, she's like, no, 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 this is what it is. That's Spider-Man. So they got to get Spider-Man in the movie. So Spider-Man is in the movie, legally speaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a Spider-Man movie. He's in there. He's got I'm it. not so it contractually a, satisfies their, their legal yeah. obligation to have Spider-Man I'm not a in the copyright movie. or contract lawyer. But that is the best explanation for the existence of the movie, I think. Yeah. That could the be movie, made. Okay. The presence of baby Spider-Man, we can debate whether that the the movie being released is a hundred percent. Like I think I think they would look you dead in the eyes over at Sony and say, Oh yeah, we had to release yeah, that. <laughs> we did. We did have to. Yeah. Justin, cool. I have uh one question left and it is CPR related. At okay, any thank point, you. at any point in the movie, does anyone do the thing where it looks like the compressions aren't working, and they get so mad that they kind of start pounding on the person's chest like a gorilla, and yeah. then that no, works? No, Trav, the chest compressions always work. Oh, okay, one hundred percent. And the time. it doesn't just keep their blood pumping and oxygen going enough for them to get to the hospital. It brings them back to They're consciousness. Fine. Yeah. The one time, the one time, there is one time it doesn't work. It's early in the development of her psychic abilities. Mm. And she sees her friend get into an ambulance and leave the scene of an accident and then get drilled by an oncoming truck. Bummer. And she sees that happen and then time resets. And she's talking to God. She's like, oh man, that was so weird. Well, see ya. <laughs> and he's like, okay, you're, are you sure I shouldn't wait another few seconds? She's like, no, 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 go ahead, go, go, go. <laughs> Go, 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 go. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then he goes and he gets hit and she pulls him out of the thing and he's bleeding and she's doing chest compressions. They're not on a bleeding, on a man bleeding out. And she realizes that if she doesn't act on these visions, Mm. people could die so badly that even CPR can't bring them back. Devin Sawa figured that out right away in Final Destination and it takes Madam Webb. Watching someone die t- t- twice <laughs> Travis, <laughs> before she connects the dots. I can't believe I have to tell you this again. Whenever Devin Sawa is in a movie, he is not playing himself every time. I don't know why you have that stuff. But in he your looks head. exactly the same. Okay, like but if I, I remember see him watching in real I, life, and I, I remember, see him in a movie. He still looks like Devin. He Sawa. still looks like Devin Sawa. I get that. But we watched Idle Hands together, and you were kind of insufferable because you were that like, one why was would, a wild one. You were like, why would Devin Sawa do that? And it's like he's an actor. I didn't know that Casper was the ghost of Devin Sawa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Our friend, our friends Emma Gill, who recommended the movie, uh, pointed out. Gill said, "I want to re- repeat: the CPR was somehow more distracting than the fact that his villain had his feet out." <laughs> whole time which i thought was also really interesting and also good yeah the villain's puppies <laughs> get her just out his the toe beans are just there the bad guy the bad guy anytime he's not, not dressed as evil spider-man he's in a full power suit but with the puppies blazing fucking now, boys, cool, dude. boys we have been talking about madam web for 23 minutes you have you've been listening to madam web for 23 minutes i've been talking about madam web for 23 yeah. minutes Oh man, next year, Max Fun Drive, stretch goal. You guys are going to watch Madam oh, Webb. It's a, a hoot and a half. All right, so this is an advice show. Yeah. I know nothing about fishing. However, on the beach I live near and go for a lot of walks on, there are often two fishermen fishing into the ocean. I often want to make conversation with them about their fishing and ask them if they've caught anything good today. How do I bullshit my way through a conversation about fishing? That's from Curious About Carp in Cornwall. I like to include questions in the question list from time to time that are just a little bit easy layup, just a whoop. Yeah, just sure. A easy layup. Yeah. yeah, I feel super qualified yeah. to do this. Well, no, here's the mm-hmm. thing about this. Um, a couple things. One, they don't want to talk to you. If they wanted to talk to human beings, they, they would not be, be yeah. quietly One of sitting on a beach. Activities, yes, yeah. fishing. One of the few activities that if you talk too much, it stops working. You can't it do it. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't. Secondly, and I tell you who's who's always this is a rule that everybody knows pretty good cuz I have noticed that dads are biologically required to re- 
let kids know that there can be no talking. Yeah. Dad seemed really insistent, in fact, that any talking at uh, our oh, dad, shush, I remember shush, with shush. the three of us, would do a lot of reminding us that we cannot talk because it's in will fishing. The fish maybe, life. maybe reminding one of us more than the other two <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> Sometimes I think that dads maybe just don't want you to talk. That's so, that inter- my, that's so interesting because I don't so feel that. Interesting. I now love when the my dads. children talk. I think they're pleasant. Um, but also, secondly, I would say fishing is also among, and there's several other activities like this, but where the person talking to you about it loves when you don't know anything about it. Yeah. And they true. can tell you everything about it. Yeah, this that's is, true. Most people forget that you, that people don't necessarily, like, really, like, Telling people about stuff they don't know about. Yeah. I hate looking like I don't know about everything in the world. And that's my great struggle because I think I'd be happier if I just <laughs> Because there's a the ton time. of like, shit you do not know about. Shit like a ton know. of shit. Most, shit, dude. Most of even. it. I would most, say just, most, yeah, just statistically it. speaking. Big, most big stuff. Big yeah. wide swaths of the of the culture that I have just taken a flyer on, even. Yeah. Taken a flyer. Yeah. Um, I know nothing about fishing, but my algo has started to serve me up piping hot TikToks of people making lures because that's good Ooh, shit. Right really? There. Yeah, a lot of that's my fun. guys, my algo beats ass. I'll scroll yeah, through man. that shit and it'll be like sports blooper, and then it'll be like, here's a jazz chord progression that we've been cooking up in the jazz kitchen. And then it'll be like, wanna watch me make a lure? very quietly for a minute and a half. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Cause these things, guys, some of these things, I want to bite them. And I know it would hurt like a yeah, lot, man. but yeah, I want to yeah, bite yeah. it. If I was a fucking fish, there's no Forget way. Shiny My algorithm fingers. for some reason, just as a side note, serves me up videos referencing trends, but not the trend themselves. Yeah, where sure. it's videos of like, oh, I wish I could participate in this trend, but I don't know what the trend is. So even my algorithm is like, you're out of touch, and so are yeah, we. Yeah, it sounds like it's got a peg, man. <laughs> um, I want to say that I think that what you need to do is a cultural exchange. Like, I would like to talk to somebody who fishes in real life, and they tell me about that, and then they have to listen to me tell them about the fishing mini game in Stardew Valley that I'm very good at. That's yeah, and I can tell them about the different locations and what where yeah. you can catch it or rains and what kind of bait you should is and what are your chances and how the bar you do any, works. Uh, you do any sewer fishing with that bad boy? Mm, oh yeah, you gotta jacks? get down there. You get any slime jacks? What are my mutant cart? Krobus will be very impressed. Another version of this is you walk up right next to them while they're doing their thing on the beach and you, you put a finger up to your lips like I get it. Shh, I get it. No talking here. You pull out your phone you start playing a little Pokemon Go. We're both Oh, we're, we're both missing. mastering the wilds, as is our you know, right, our God-given right as humans. Okay, all you get, all you get. This is easy. You just set a Bible down be- between you and say, "I'm something of a fisher myself." That's cool too. A fisher, of, but a can fisher you do men. it in the accent of Willem Dafoe doing some proselytizing? <laughs> okay, I'm something of a fisher myself. <laughs> No. Fisher of men. Travis. You're saying that because you can see me and I don't look like Willem yeah. Dafoe, but I you sound a hot. If you try, try with your eyes closed. Hold on. Travis was about to cook. <laughs> Travis is cooking up something in the kitchen that get, also get it, doesn't Travis, sound like Willem kitchen. Dafoe. What do you got? You know, I'm something of a fisher myself. That's nope. pretty good. Mm, nope. It's nope. good. It's better than Justin. Right at the side you lost it, but it was good. You know, I'm, I'm something of a fisher I'm myself. myself. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm something s- of a fisher myself. It was a firefight! You know, I'm uh, something um, of a fisherman myself. My, he's turned British be, for me a little bit. Yeah. Do you know, sometimes movies and TV give you the wrong impression that old men that are by themselves and seem sad just need one friend to love them and they're so lonely and they're they got a picture of their wife that died in their pocket you know what i mean yeah. that kind of guy and they're just like kindness passes it on it's just one old man you gotta talk to. and then you forget is a lot of old men by themselves they kind of want to yeah. get to be like that. they don't they show that time <laughs> do you know how many forced social experiences you have to go through <laughs> in the first 75 years of your life to get to a point that when you're standing by yourself fishing everybody goes he's earned this he's earned you this don't have that's, to talk a, to that's all I'll say past 75. Yeah. If someone tries to talk to me, I'll say, I've earned this. Yes. He, no, you, you don't, don't understand. You don't get to see Maury Wednesday through Monday. He is yeah. fucking chilling and having the time of his life. 
Tuesdays, just, he's basically doing community service yes. by hanging out with a younger person. If you are a fisher, please email and let us know because my assumption would be you have to fight and scrape to carve out that hour to just go fish by your fucking self. Yes. <laughs> and my assumption is that, that I, like Travis said, they do not want you to talk to them while they are fishing. Yeah. Please, if we are incorrect or correct, email in, educate us about fishing because we I, obviously I tell you, this is where the collapse of sort of hat culture has let us down. Because I oh, feel like- you. We were all thinking. We and I'm all glad yeah. you, said you get it, you the little tip. It's so not like it's not fucking pro. Like I'm not Great Gatsby. Like we're not tipping hats so much anymore. Yeah. In like most of the country, I think. Um, I don't go outside. Did you know it's a common misconception? His first name is actually Greg. It's no Greg Gatsby. Yeah, That's interesting. I, did a, you yeah. guys um? When you guys were envisioning the fisherman in your mind's eye, just quick mind's eye check, he had like a cap on, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bucket, yeah. Hat. Imagine, bucket hat, bucket hat for sure. Yeah. Little fly bucket, fisherman's yeah, like he, vest and shit. Oh my god! Even though he's on wait. the ocean, sitting on a chair, yeah. Wait, get a hat. Yeah, uh-huh. the hat, the floppy hat that you put the lures oh, into it. Yes, yeah, yeah, we know the one, yeah. right? And then you walk past the dudes and give them a. A doff of the hat, like yeah. Oh, a fellow fisherman, I'll I'll leave you to it, good sir. Yeah, yeah. I have some fishing. Well, to get to. okay, except and then you, know you, what you, then d- you cast your lure onto the sand of the beach, facing the opposite direction. No, so you have you're to not. Go, you I don't say, want to steal his fish. Oh, you're this still right. water fishing. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> My favorite spot is over that bluff, just beyond where your eyes can see. <laughs> don't come over there. Yeah, don't check I'm on me. Be there all day, baby, and all night. I love to fish. Let's take a quick trip over to the money spot. Yeah! It's better. It's better with you. Oh, shit. Travis, slow down. You just passed the post office, and I've got to go there. I've set aside two hours in my schedule to We're go We're not inside. stopping, Justin. There's of- no time. Please, Travis, I got to no, the, this No, stuff. there's... The, the Joker is attacking the city hall. We have to okay, go right now to watch. Supposed, We're not going to help. How am I supposed to sh- ship my packages, Hawkman? If you if you need to ship your pants, don't you worry about it. Because you can use stamps.com on the bat pewter. Whoa, Hawkman, why are they letting you use the bat pewter? Whoa. Well, Batman's sick and he's letting me borrow his car. Cool. Whoa, as long as really we put bat gas in it. Ice job. I'm Mr. Freeze. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> are you in the back seat? Are you with us? Yeah, I'm chilling. Okay. Is Mr. Freeze with us now? Yeah. Griffin, can we speak with you? Sure. Mr. He's yeah, let me just get him back. Let me get him back here. Ice to meet you. <laughs> it's ice to meet you as well, Mr. Freeze. Mr. <laughs> Freeze, do you use stamps.com? Um No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really should. <laughs> no, I'm a bad guy. They don't want me to oh. use it. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Well, you should because it takes care of mail. Oh, shit, Stamps.com's website just fell on me and killed me. I'm Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Yay! Yay, Yay! Stamps.com. I'm so um, glad they got that sign. They have a mobile app, too. Can the mobile app fall on you as well? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All you need is... Wait, I don't, now, Trav, I don't have a scale, though. Is this going to be a problem oh, for me? Because I can't wait Oh, Justin, my new sidekick. Uh, Hawk Boy is what I'm going to call you. know, Bird Boy... Uh, let's go with Hatchling. Hatchling, don't you worry about it. They'll send you a free scale, and they'll seamlessly connect with every major marketplace and shopping cart if you sell online. Wow. Yeah, you can get rates you can't find anywhere else, like up to 89% off USPS and UPS rates. So now, let's take this (laughs) dead-ass Mr. Freeze to jail (laughs) while you read the mandatory call to action section, Hatchling. I'll drive. (laughs) You gotta read. Yeah, make the same no-brainer decision as Hawkman and over uh, over one million other businesses with Stamps.com. Whoa! Sign up with promo code My Brother. Careful for a special offer that includes a four-week trial. Duck plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. I'm shot. Go to Stamps.com. <laughs> click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code My Brother. Get me to a hospital. I'm bleeding out. But where can I find a doctor, Hatchling? Well, good news. It's too late for him. He's di- he's dying. He needs the salvation of Jesus ice. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Jesus ice. Luckily, I know CPR. You drive, <laughs> Mr. Freeze. 
<laughs> take the wheel. I don't know how. Freeze us, take the wheel. <laughs> Listen, if you need to get your affairs in order, one, Dying. you need to seek the salvation I, I of Jesus to, Ice. Yes, I need a will. You need also a will. Zoc. Freezes can, Christ is better than <laughs> Jesus Ice. Freezes Freezes Ice is cool. No, that, no, that's too far away. <laughs> it's too much different from Jesus. Look. I am. We don't know anything. We've established this so many times in this one episode, yeah. and we've done 705 of these bad boys already. Yeah. You know, don't you know us by now? This is like exhibit AAA 745 in the court docket of us not knowing anything. Listen, yeah. it is very difficult when you are trying to build a social network of healthcare providers. I call them my friends. And I call them even my best friends, some of them. Wow. My dermatologist. I would say that there, there are some buddy. things that my doctor knows about me. Sure. That maybe those closest to me, Absolutely. I would be afraid to tell them. Yes. That's heartening. Um, ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Couldn't be easier, couldn't be faster. I did this, I've done this a, a half dozen times. Just living in D.C. when I moved here, I don't know any, I didn't have any doctor friends. Now mm. I do, because ZocDoc hooked me up, and they let you uh, search based on, like, what insurance you have, and uh, it, it lets you just see all the doctors. You can book an appointment right through the app. It's super, super, super easy. The uh, typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 to 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments. Uh, it, it really is a great service, and if you live in a city where you have trouble, uh, you know, finding the right health care for you, you should use ZocDoc, because I have in it. It does kick ass. Go to ZocDoc.com slash my brother. Download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash my brother. ZocDoc.com slash my brother. Hatchling died, by the way, just to make it clear. Hatchling. Hatchling. Oh, no. Yeah. Why would you kill off a beloved character like Hatchling? Oh, Hatchling there's there's 11 more things. of them in the case, bud. Don't worry. Like, yeah, I can okay, just hatch true. another one. Are you tired of being picked on for only wanting to talk about your cat at parties? Do you feel as though your friends don't understand the depth of love you have for your guinea pig? When you look around a room of people, do you wonder if they know sloths only have to eat one leaf a month? Have you ever dumped someone for saying they're just not an animal person? Us too. She's Alexis B. Preston. She's Ella McLeod. And we host Comfort Creatures, the show where you can't talk about your pets too much, animal trivia is our love language, and dragons are just as real as dinosaurs. Tune into Comfort Creatures every Thursday on Maximum Fun. What is up, people of the world? Do you have an argument that you keep having with your friends and you just can't seem to settle it? And you're sitting there arguing about whether it's Star Trek or Star Wars, or you can't decide what is the best nut, or can't agree on what is the best cheese. Stop doing that. Listen to We Got This with Mark and Hal, only on Max Fun. Your topics asked and answered objectively, definitively, for all time. So don't worry, everybody. We, we got, got this. this. We got this. Uh, do you guys want to talk about Oak Island for a second? Yeah. On, on mic for the show? Yeah, for sure. Cause we have a question here. There was a Canadian Island where rumor has it pirate treasure may have been buried about 300 years ago. This person is making so many assumptions about Oak Island, but let's move on. I also My love great- that. It very, very, you, you didn't know. Hey, question asked you didn't know, but you, you did put, know. you put in parentheses here, Oak Island as though you, the second Canadian island came, maybe not even that far into it. Justin was like, Oak Island. Is Oak Island? Island? Yeah. It's Oak Island. Uh, my great uncle, now appropriately deceased, was a treasure hunter. Appropriately in the deceased? I don't know why it says appropriately I deceased. I assume because maybe. his great uncle, because his great uncle implies of a certain age. Yeah, I there can be great uncles great that uncle. are still doing it, though. Yeah, yes, I'm but with great, great uncle. uncle comes great <laughs> death. <laughs> That's a was, fair point. <laughs> he's a treasure hunter uh, on the island in the 60s. So I... Justin might I be able to w- name this fool. I wish there might there was more details here, because I would assume we're talking about somebody 
in the original syndicate, which was Blankenship and Nolan and the other guys. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know which one he would be, but the original people who, well, not the original people, the original people go back to the 1800s. But so we've got somebody in that 60s group that maybe split off and did Triton later, but we'll see. Um, the Hunter on the Island and later produced a booklet outlining where he thought the treasure is buried. The booklet is logical and gripping. Pilot, pirates, stone markers, science, spiritual mediums, underground tunnels, all de rigueur yeah. for, th for this island. My dad still has a copy. There's also a reality TV show revolving around the search for his this treasure. As of 2024, the show's in its 11th season. No kidding. My dad has emailed the TV show about it, but has received no response. How can I get my dad's treasure booklet onto TV, preferably without watching the show? That's from Craving Cartographic Consequence in Canada. And I feel like we could get this done. Oh. Mm. Do you mean no? now, Justin? I want to clarify here. We can get it done getting the pamphlet in the hands of the Oak Island people, or no, we can find the treasure. Well, I like that, Trav. I do like that we have this one piece of evidence that the uh the 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 Lagini brothers do not have. Yeah. yeah. Are we the Nicolas so, Cage in this circumstance or maybe we the are other no, I think we're the bad guys, I think, come swooping into Oak Island to steal Jesus's the spear that killed Jesus or whatever. Right, exact. Yes, exactly. We're the bad guys. So, I think so. Yeah, we're the bad guys. Here's what I think we should do: the guys are there filming the TV show, sure. and they are having so much fun running around and playing on their island. It doesn't I seem like it. I've never seen anything on that show that looks like an old man having fun. It always looks like an old man saying, "Like, well, maybe no, fuck." You should watch it more because when these guys start slamming can, as they call it. <laughs> When these Griffin there, I cannot Is tell you how many scenes thing? there. Is it a sex? I cannot tell you how many scenes there are of someone sticking a very long metal tube into the ground, yeah. pulling up a big tube of dirt, yeah. and then everybody excitedly looking at the dirt. It's a no, lot. No, it's, it's Justin. You've described every episode of this show that I have ever watched in a hotel because there was nothing else for me to watch at the time. Right. So. What I'm saying is, these guys are having so much fun running around looking for the treasure. Slamming we show up, yeah, on the other side of the island. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not that big, and we're gonna and we show up, and here's what we have. Okay, one, we have a booklet from this question asker's great uncle, who's appropriately, appropriately dead, <laughs> tastefully dead, <laughs> and dead. <laughs> zestfully dead. <laughs> And then we have something else that the the, the Legitas and their team don't have. Yeah. Guns. Lots Whoa, of Whoa, holy okay. shit. <laughs> Wait, uh, and Justin, how confident are you on a scale of one to ten that their team does not have guns? I am yes. not confident. So what we have what we have is a team of fifty disgraced Navy SEALs. <laughs> okay. A lot of guns. And these and these guys are all former disgraced military. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> they uh, they were they were dismissed from our armed services with extreme prejudice because they were terrible human beings. Yeah. But they're going to help us, yeah. for uh, the right price. Okay, to yes, take yes, this yes, island yes. By force. Yeah, we land. So can we land on one of those planes where the whole back opens up and like tanks and stuff roll out of the back? Oh, that's of it. cool. Now, I'm not going to hurt anybody. They don't oh. need to know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt anybody. But I am guaranteeing this will be a storyline on the show. And the there, 50, there and the no 50 soldiers, they're all community theater actors that we have hired yeah. um, right. to do it's, this for it's us. It's getting a little berry for my taste, but I do love this plan. Yeah. There's no way they can't feature this excite. This would be the most exciting happened ever thing that ever happened on the show exponentially. Yeah, I mean, by a huge this margin. This turn the whole thing on its fucking ear. Now, Justin, you've they watched a lot so of- so thrilled. You've watched a lot of Curse of Oak Island. If you had to establish a certain sense of danger and you had to kill one of their team, who would it be? Now, it is known, the one of the things that is known from a factual yes, perspective- Yes, yes. Is that six people have died in pursuit and legend has it, so fact, sort of history has yeah. it that- uh, the treasure will not be found until a seventh has died. Sure. Now, this has gotten sticky as this show has gone on for 11 years and a lot of old men have looked for this treasure. Yeah. We've lost a few on the path. And treasure whenever it related? Does, there's this, no. Well, well that's, that's the question. Now we're splitting that's hairs. That's interesting, isn't it, Trev? That is a fodder for much Reddit discussion is, does this one count? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is the one that counts. Uh, but the intro keeps saying that, so apparently it isn't the what someone cooler, I guess, or so. Uh, who would you kill, Justin? I think you got to fall into well. 
You have to fall into a hole. Hold on, just finish that, that thought. You have to fall into a hole, and then the you, the seventh person who does it. I think you have to die in active. Right. Person. That's yeah. what. That's the. That's the question. In the line you, of duty. Yeah. You hit the ground so hard, and then like, coins just remember, shoot out of your body if you're number seven. We all remember when they chucked a bunch of scuba divers into a big old hole. Yeah. To yeah. see what was down there, and it was very dangerous. If one of those guys had died, that counts. Yeah, Cha-ching. that's probably gonna be it. Yeah. Now that would be a bummer though, because they weren't really established as characters. Yeah. yeah. And it would be a little sad. You know what well, I mean? Well, you would have time in the spoof. editing bay when one of them died to, to then maybe to beef it to up beef leading up. up to it. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, um, Justin, which one would you shoot? I don't want. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna talk about somebody I'd really kill because we're not gonna kill anybody. Remember, it's just the it's play for Okay, then if you were it's gonna stage, fun. if you were gonna stage it to establish drama, the answer to this question would only make me feel bad. It won't mean anything to the listeners, so we're not gonna talk about that. Here's what we'll talk about. What do you think? What do you? Th- what do you? Th- what do you think's down there? <laughs> Tim, Templar gold, man. What do you think? You think it's Templar gold? Because I think it's bones. I think bones? Bones well, for sure. There's bones, Justin. Six people have died in the pursuit yeah. of this thing. So there's some bones. I'll say there's probably about 1,200 bones and plus change. My, my theory that I have been touting for a long time, it's the Ark of the Covenant, but it's filled with bones. So they would find the Ark of the Covenant, open it up, not the Ten Commandments. It's all bones, but they do feel like it's think the Ark of the Covenant. If they open it up and there's bones in there, Justin, are they disappointed yeah. or are they excited? Travis... I watched them do a three episode arc about a coin they found. I think if they find fucking anything, they will be absolutely stoked. Do you think that there would be a moment if they pulled something up from the bottom of yeah. this Oak Island pit? They pull oh. it up and they're which like, pit? the money pit or one of the other shafts? The shaft money pit, the main pit? shaft. And they pull it up and they're like, we super- have explored the main shaft extremely thoroughly, Trav. Okay. I don't hey, think no we treasure in the main shaft. Can you dance with me to the song I'm playing? And I they, just need it to be in some way grounded in reality. We have okay. explored the money pit. You don't even know where the money pit original shaft is, so go on. But they okay. uncover Let's say we're the original shaft, whatever. They that uncover means. the treasure of Oak Island, which is witches. Bones. Sure, whatever witches. And so witches. they pull it up. Dirt witches from the ground. <laughs> How long do you think they celebrate before the reality that the show is now done is canceled? Yeah, sinks in. Probably, I mean, you're and you're what? suggesting they're making more money on the show than they would from the the accursed treasure, treasure of, of Oak Island. Yes, considering I, that if this show had not aired, there's no way they could have funded an eleven year long search. Okay, watching it is an incredibly meditative experience because what is always in your mind is this: history would spoil this show, reality would spoil this reality show if anything ever happened on it. Yeah. Because there's no way the the discovery, the, the editing would out. So watching this show, you know for a fact yeah, nothing is going to happen. No. <laughs> like, you know nothing you is going to happen. You know that phrase, the greatest treasure was the friends we made along the way? Yes. That's yes. Only, only true of this show. I hopped on this wagon again at a hotel in what I can only assume was season nine or maybe ten. And these dudes talk to each other in a fucking like sibling twin language that no one else can comprehend. Just like, yeah, stinky Jeff and his special cubes. And it's like, what the fuck are you? What is what the fuck does that mean? This is like when Dirty uh, Mike fell in the money hole, junior money hole. I don't remember that because I wasn't there. I didn't see that part. Justin, who's uh, the Australian digger man? Oh, uh, uh, Gary Drayton. The, he is uh, uh, he, he's an Australian treasure hunter, Gary and Drayton. And his who, specialty is what? Um, he's a metal, detect- <laughs> metal detection expert, Gary Drayton. That's how he's always billed on the show. Uh, and... Um, uh, he talks about the Bobby Dazzlers he finds all the time. Mm. Um, anyway, this is a great show. And if you're not already watching it, there's plenty of time to catch up before the big reveal of the treasure. Um, Which is? And I do, what? Which is? I do also want to talk about Billy Gerhart. Billy Gerhart is a um, heavy machine operator. He's the guy that dro- drove the bulldozer. And... Uh, he never had any opinion about anything that was happening. They would just tell him to dig a hole and he'd like, but Billy is, was on the show for so long that he started getting dragged into discussions and he, and eventually Billy, the guy who operates the truck is in the room where they're talking about discoveries because everyone in the audience loved Billy so much. Right. Like the Reddit 
forum for this show, that just everybody loves Billy. So the producers of the show start putting Billy, the forklift op, the, the heavy machine operator, in the what they call the war room, the where war they're room, planning yeah. for their discoveries. So the dynamic is always like six dudes, always dudes, talking about where they're going to look for the treasure. And in this circumstance, I actually don't think that's so bad, because I think... <laughs> I, I think it would time. actually bring it would bring the cause down a little bit to include some women in this particular discussion and train of thought. Right? Yeah. This is like you look at a room full of dudes putting a lot of time and money and effort into this, and you're like, "Yeah, that tracks." Billy is now in the war room, but still is resolute on not contributing anything to this mis- the mystery part of it Love until that. they get to the subject of holes being dug, yeah. at which point he will nod solemnly, yes, I will dig the holes. <laughs> yes, a hole shall be dug there. <laughs> it sounds to me oh, then- yes, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> it sounds to me then, the play, we, the three of us, and this question asker, we can't cut them out, but we totally, but we totally fucking could if we wanted to. If yeah. we need to, if, if, if we need to, to we, we take the podcast. We take the map. Sounds like the only one we need is Billy and his big truck. And we say, Billy, here. And he's like, yep. and he does it. And we get the treasure, which is Bones. And oh, so Gary's going to be so disappointed because Bones ain't metal. What's the better? We never have found them. You guys dig up the treasure of Oak Island. It is yeah. coins, which is pirates' money. Mm-hmm. You. Is the play or bones, which is pirates, bones, which is pirates, coins, which is pirates, money, or the p- the pills that are pirates' medicine? They buried those mm-hmm. two. A lot of people don't talk about that. Limitless, limitless pills. Do you Yar. go public? What's up, everybody? I found the the accursed treasure of Oak Island. It was bones and coins and some pirate medicine. And then you're famous, and the show is over, and you have com- you are known as the hero of or. Do you never tell a fucking soul? And you follow this hunt for the treasure with schadenfreudian glee that you know that you are solely res- – keep digging. Oh, yeah. That'll be it. Yeah, That'll be the whole it. for sure. Go for it, Billy. Griffin, uh, slight middle ground. Okay. I would find the treasure, yeah. take one coin, bury it. Like oh my 10 God. feet. Oh, Trav. I know. This is diabolical, man. You shouldn't do this. this but is I would do it again heard. and again in the same spot every season <laughs> and a half. I love yeah. it. <laughs> in the, oh, wow. in the, the exact same racing. spot. <laughs> I, guys, I've been really fighting. I've been really fighting the urge while recording this segment of thinking about. I feel like this is my in. <laughs> this question asks me. Huge for you. Is my. My only in. You could right? get a if finder's I, fee of appearing on Curse of Oak Island. This is all I want yeah. is I want to be like, this podcaster found a document from a listener. It's unearthed and we brought him here and he's an expert. That's cool, I dude. I to say, they let lots of people be experts on that show. Yeah. And I would just like we to have not wielded the McElroy Brothers will be in Trolls Energy in quite some time i think that it has i think we have recharged and refreshed that particular reservoir and if this is what you want to spend it on i think that's I pretty see, I good i need it. i i'm trying to figure out a way that i can communicate to the oak island producers that i i may be laughing on the outside but i'm not gonna make a joke of their fun game oh no <laughs> no look for the you treasure. can't bring travis I, and i like travis and i cannot no, come no, no, on this no. show you guys are not invited no 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 no, no, no. we will embarrass just, justin if we did this right. if anything you'll embarrass me you'll mess it up producers i think you should be more concerned that justin is going to bring so much heat that you won't know what to do that is a good him. point justin the producers of this pro- show are probably very wary of having another Somebody billy si- another billy situation on yeah. their hands yeah. Yeah, yeah, my star might rise too meteorically. Yeah, is that's a that is a fear. That's a concern. That is the for that sure. is the curse of the curse of Oak Island that a lot of people don't know about. Um, more I'm like, assuming more that like this Broke Island. Is, I'm a, I'm assuming this discussion is burning up the Reddit. Um, they have the Drunk Island thread over there every week where people get extremely wasted and then watch the episode and live chat about it. It's a fun vibe. Cool. We we're all cool having vibe. A lot of fun over there. Cool vibe. You know what else has cool vibes? This podcast that we make together. Cool. Oh, yeah. I love it. You that. like that? I do. It's kind of a segue. I love it. I don't know. You know what has cool Someone vibes? This segue I'm writing. That's cool. Dude, what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, you know what? I'm going to talk about the fact that we're going to do some live shows 
coming up very, very soon. Uh, we're going to be doing Mabim Bam and Taz in Chicago during oh, C2E2 oh, uh, later great. this month. I'm just about to buy tickets for that My Brother, My Brother Me show in Chicago. I was pretty excited for it. Oh, oh bad Justin. news, you dork. What? It's sold out because we're so oh. fucking popular out up Can there in Pizza us. City. I don't know. He keeps saying that. We've peaked. <laughs> uh, but hey, Taz... Still tickets for that. So that one hasn't peaked. Taz has peaked. Taz, yes, absolutely. But, Crap, absolutely. Taz, 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 but that's okay. Right. Tickets. Catch Taz on the way out. Because my, my brother, my brother, those the stakes are, are low. Now the right. stakes are low. You can get in. Some people say get in on the ground floor. No, I disagree. I say get in when it's going past the ground floor and it's down. And you don't have to it's worry about it. It's in the basement now. Now yeah, you get in. You're going to be playing Taz versus Dracula uh, with those characters in a sort of one shot story called Taz versus Moby Dick. You can Im- imagine what that's going to be about. My Bim Bam sold out. Fuck you. There's April not 25th. a lot of tickets left for Taz. <laughs> Taz, there's not a lot of tickets. <laughs> April so 25th, Taz, there's some number of tickets. Maybe it's a lot. Don't Maybe fuck it's you. a little. <laughs> Don't not fuck you. April, Thank you. A- thank you. Life. This is the opposite. April 26th to 28th, we're going to be at C2E2. We're going to tell you our schedule for that when we know it you don't need a badge for c2e2 to attend the live shows you do need a badge for c2e2 to attend c2e2 we've also got (laughs) shows coming up in vancouver and tacoma uh here coming up in may and then in june we're going to kansas city chesterfield missouri and tyson's virginia tickets for the chicago show are on sale now tickets for all the other shows go on sale friday april 12th at 10 a.m local time go to bit.ly slash mcelroy tours for tickets and more information um we've got some exciting new merch over the merch store for april including a Garrel and Tyler Thrasher stuffy bundle. You get a stuffed Garrel and Tyler Schrodinger cat blind box, which includes one of three possible cat plushies. We've got the Taz versus Dracula poster by Zachary Sterling, the rest in peace Miggy sticker from uh, McElroy Family Clubhouse, which, by the way, if you missed last week's episode, we had Ron Funches on. It was an absolute hoot. You can find that. Yeah, please watch that show. Yeah, on our McRoy uh, YouTube channel under the uh, live tab. Uh, the Wombat pin with dangling cube poop things designed by Trisha Swinger. Uh, that's from a conversation on Wonderful Griffin and Rachel had. Uh, and 10% of all merch proceeds this month go to the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. So check that out at McRoyMerch.com. Thank you to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better With You. Uh, it's a great track from uh, just one of Earth's great humans. Um, mm-hmm. And thank you all for, for listening. Thanks uh, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. And thanks to everybody who supported us in the Max Fun Drive. Should we put one up to... Yeah, let's, let's yeah, raise I can, up a wish. Can I hit this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I got one for Fungalore here. Um, this yeah, is a wish the listener sent in. I wish Charleston Chews were just a little less chewy. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. Me kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows, supported directly by you.